Think of passive income as interest, dividends, rents, royalties, and gains on property producing such income. There are two very important exceptions to passive income that are not in the subpart F definitions, but are in section 904 or are different in section 904. There's a high tax kickout and there's look through for certain amounts received from controlled foreign corporations. The high tax kickout says passive income is treated as general basket if it was subject to high foreign income tax. High tax for this purpose means an effective tax rate as computed exceeding the top federal tax rate under chapter one for the type of taxpayer. The high tax kickout is simple in general concept, but tough in implementation. One key thing you must remember is that it is not a comparison of raw tax rates. Just before, because a foreign tax rate is 40% doesn't mean you meet the high tax exception. And just because it's 30% doesn't mean you failed to meet it. You have to always do the calculations and they can be tough. The determination of whether something is subject to high foreign tax is made on an item by item basis, applying both US and foreign rules. Remember, it applies only to items of passive income and the only effect of the high tax kickout is to change the particular item from passive basket to general basket. First, we must determine what an item is. Most stuff gets grouped, so there are often only a few items. All passive income subject to a withholding tax of 15% or more is grouped as one item. All other passive income subject to some withholding tax is grouped as another item. Then the passive income not subject to withholding tax is grouped as one item. However, the items are determined separately for each qualifying business unit or QBU of the taxpayer. That's a foreign currency translation concept. We'll discuss QBUs in the foreign currency module. And there's a separate item for each item within the QBU's country and a separate one for each item outside the QBU's country. This can result in a lot of items for a taxpayer or a company with branches in a lot of countries. Determining what tax is associated with what income so we can compute the effective tax rate is based on the rules of the country imposing the tax. For example, many countries, just like the US, tax capital gains at a different rate than other income. For withholding tax, which tax goes with which income might be pretty obvious. For non-withheld tax, it can be trickier. I've had mixed results relying on colleagues in other countries to do this determination for me. Differences in language con and concepts can be big obstacles in communicating and getting to the right answer. You need to understand the foreign rules well enough to associate the tax with the income. Once we know what the income and tax are, we must translate the tax to dollars as we discussed in the first foreign tax credit segment. Next, we need to determine what the taxable income is under U.S. principles, including timing. This requires allocating and apportioning deductions in the manner we've, we'll discuss in the 861 module. This allocation and apportionment process can be very involved. And since we might be doing it, a whole bunch of times, computers sure come in handy. This finally gets us to the point we can figure out the effective tax rate of the foreign tax in dollars on the item of income in dollars. This part's pretty simple. Divide the foreign tax 
associated with the item by the taxable income, after all deductions, for the item. All this in dollars. Then the last step, compare that result to the appropriate tax rate, currently 35% or 39.6%. You can't take shortcuts in this process. You often can't tell intuitively whether or not income meets the high tax exception unless the rate is really low. So let's do a quick example. Assume everything is US dollars to begin with and there's only one item. I have 150 of otherwise passive rental income before depreciation and there's no foreign withholding tax. The foreign rules allow me a depreciation deduction of 30, so my net income subject to foreign tax is 120. The foreign tax rate is only 27.5%, so the total foreign tax is 33. For U.S. purposes, assume I'm allowed a depreciation deduction of 50. My net taxable income for the item under U.S. rules is 100. Thus, the foreign tax of 33 is at an effective tax rate, based on U.S. principles, of 33%. If I'm a corporation, then in 2017, the high tax exception does not apply for regular tax, and the income stays passive. But it is high tax for the subpart F rules that we'll discuss in another video. For 2018, however, this 33% far exceeds the corporate tax rate, so for 2018, the item is subject to high foreign tax and is not considered passive. Different years, different results. If I'm an individual, even if my marginal tax rate is 15%, the income stays passive for both years. That's because the 33% effective foreign tax rate is less than the maximum individual tax rate of 39.6% or 37%. My tax rate doesn't count, just the top rate. The high tax calculation is year by year. The results in one year don't affect another year. If this example isn't clear, rewind the video and watch it again. Also, read the law and regulations shown here on the screen. Then look at the example again. And here's a quiz. That brings us to a further complication. The deemed paid credits under Section 902 are also considered in determining whether there is a high foreign income tax. So in determining the amount of foreign tax, we need to combine withholding tax, directly paid taxes, and deemed paid taxes.